Grumpy Old Geeks, a weekly talk show hosted by Brian Schulmeister and Jason DeFilippo, discussing the finer points of what went wrong on the internet and who's to blame. Welcome to episode 474 of Grumpy Old Geeks for September 23rd, 2020. I'm Jason DeFilippo. And I'm Brian Schulmeister. I had two weird work things happen to me this week, Jason. Or not weird, but interesting. And Work? What's doubly that? interesting because I'm not really working. <laughs> that is the funnier part of it. Like all I'm really okay. doing is the podcast and, you know, full-time teaching and babysitting and all that sort of stuff. But uh, I got a work email and for the first time ever, I saw as part of the uh, the little thing at the bottom where you provide your, you know, all your pertinent details about your work, your position, your phone numbers, your email, all that sort of stuff. I saw gender listing, which I what? think is nice. No, it's good. It's a good thing, right? preferred gender you know call me he him or whatever <laughs> okay and, and now you got you should put that in as part of your uh, little tagline just to okay. uh, help people along i thought that was a nice touch you know okay what are you putting it's 2020 uh, he him i'm i'm pretty standard i'm pretty boring i'm cis okay you know so boring guy that's that's what it tells everybody and uh the other interesting thing i got is i and i and i already know your opinion on this but i'm gonna ask you anyways uh what's your statute of limitations in terms of helping a client that has fired you three years that's pretty long that's longer than i thought you'd give them yeah i mean three, three years, years is free or three years you still expect to get paid if it's something that involves some effort if somebody comes back to me after three years and says, hey, can you help me out with this? I will do it, but for a price. I will not do there it. There's no free Paid. involved. Yes. 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 Well, I'm seven years on and someone reached out to me and they're kind of annoyed that I was like, no. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. After three years, you are, you are well within your rights to say, actually, after six months, you're well within your rights to say, go fuck yourself. Uh, well, I would, I would actually argue that, uh, you know, if it wasn't a, and if it was kind of an acrimonious split, you're right. You're in your rights uh, one week after. <laughs> oh, no, no, no. The instant, the instant, <laughs> Yeah, you know? No. So this is a funny, like, it, it's a client that it wasn't a bad Thing and, and but I turned over all the information. You know what I'm like. I'm pretty anal about this stuff. So yeah, you know. we both are. Yeah, yeah, we both are. So I was like, all right, well, here you go. Here's everything you need. And for some reason, seven years on now, they can't find something, and they're reaching out to me. And I'm just kind of like, no, no, nah. yeah, it, it's no. been seven years. Figure it out yeah. yourselves. <laughs> I've had children in the time that you've yeah, it's taken no you to shit. write me. <laughs> There's been a pandemic. I've had kids. This isn't even my email address anymore. Come on. I'm a podcaster. <laughs> <laughs> All right. I just wanted to make sure that I wasn't being way out of line because uh, judging from the tone of their emails, they think I am. Okay. Well, you know what? Screw them. Because when um, like my last client that I left, I... Gave them every single thing that I've ever done, you know, all the backups, yep. all the credentials that I had listed out very nicely. And then, and everybody should do this. You need to go through and make sure that they remove access to every single thing that you have access to. Because oh. if something goes wrong, yes. you're the first person that they're going to come after. Yes. One of my last clients that I had, that uh, I, that was not a very good split. And uh, they did not remove me from anything. And yes, I got some threatening legal emails. And I was like, that's your guys' job. You take me off the stuff. I have not accessed it. Oh, I test it. I yeah. tested it. You know, I'm well, like, I'm okay, I still have access forward. to this. I have, <laughs> yeah, I have access to this. I still have access to this. Get me off of this. I'm very adamant about removing my access to anything. You know, it's like in the future, if you want to hire me to come back, fine. But for now, I, w I need to make sure because I've been in that situation you've been in. Yep. And I'm like, no, we are going to have an email trail where you confirm <laughs> to me that you have removed my access and I cannot get into your server, your social accounts, your email accounts, this, that, the other. Get it gone. Yep. Agreed. So good times. Speaking of getting it gone, Apple mm -hmm. has gotten gone of something that I really, really liked. Mm-hmm. Force touch support from the uh, the new watches or the old watches even. Well, the yeah, the new uh, the new watch OS. Yeah, we have yeah. watch OS seven, and uh, it it irks the crap out of me. So when I have a bunch of you know notifications, I just like to force touch it. I use the force, Luke, and then they <laughs> go away. Yes, I, they you know, don't clear. do that anymore. And clearing no, no, notifications is a pain. Yes, you got to scroll. 
you got to scroll. Uh, I, I've had complaints about how you delete text messages and things like that from your watch for forever. It, it's multiple, way too many clicks. Um, I've actually had a lot of problems with the watch OS 7 update. I don't know if you have, but for me, uh, oh. my, my watch has just rebooted a couple times. It's just shut down. Uh, when I charge it at night, it will randomly flash up. Why is it flashing? It's charging. It's sitting on a charger. It should not ah. be lighting up at all. And it does repeatedly every single night since I've done the update, which drives my wife nuts. And now I barely have a charged phone because I end up, you know, half asleep just grabbing my fo- my watch off the charger and throwing it into the corner because it keeps lighting up. <laughs> Check out the alarm clock mode because that might get it might have gotten turned on. It's not on. Oh, it's not. No. Oh, then no. If it, I know. it will just light up for no reason. Ah, well, charge it in the kitchen then. That's that, I guess so. <laughs> I mean, that's what I'm going to have to do now. <laughs> yeah. The one that I've gotten is, so I turn my phone on to airplane mode before I go to bed. Mm-hmm. And then I let my phone, let my watch charge and I get up and usually I go to bed and I've got about 30% charge left. And over the past, you know, since the iOS or watch OS seven update, about I did like here it, I have a very set schedule five in the morning I put my watch on nine o'clock at night it goes on the stands it's thirty five percent charge this has been going on for years now or at mm-hmm. least since I got the five nowadays though burning about through six, the power six o'clock in the afternoon you've got ten percent power left yep 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 and I'm also so, experiencing that yep what I figured out was when my phone is on airplane mode. Mm-hmm. My watch is trying to connect to my phone using Bluetooth instead of Wi-Fi, ah. which is taking up more power. Because I looked at it this morning. I'm like, I've been up for about 45 minutes and I am down 10%. This right. is not right. And then I realized, oh, my phone's still on airplane mode. I turned my phone off of airplane mode and my watch, the the battery drain slowed down you know, considerably. Right. So so if, you're, if you have a, an Apple Watch paired to an iPhone... And you're in airplane mode, just, you know, just expect that watch to just start, you know, you can just sit there and watch the percentage drop. It's ridiculous. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's, uh, you know, Apple, I don't know what's going on with Apple, but uh, things are just getting worse and worse, aren't they? Well, we're back into one of those cycles. You know, we, we've had yeah. these cycles before. If you go back to the beginnings of the show, we had these cycles where Apple can do no wrong. Everything works. And then, oh, Jesus. Oh, jeez. <laughs> All the all the really good engineers have vested, so we're getting the the fresh talent in. Then they get they get good at it. Then shit, they vested. Okay, we're back to the cycle. We are, we are obviously on the vesting roller coaster again, and yeah. on the downswing. Yeah, my phone power charging is is going crazy again with that latest update. So this is not a good cycle for them. And Johnny Ive is gone. He's yeah. buggered off. So. <laughs> Take right. it, take it with what it is. Okay, that's that's more Apple talk than we've done in a very, <laughs> that's very <true>. long time. <laughs> and speaking of taking it for what it is, uh, on Saturday the TikTok deal has changed yet again. Oh, of course, of course. Yeah, well, you, you mean you mean the the TikTok scam? Yes, the, the backroom shenanigan scam. bullshit. Well, the, uh, as uh, the article that I'm ta- I'm reading from talks uh, is titled, "This TikTok deal stinks." In so many ways, like fi- like like week old fish, <laughs> yes. three day old fish. Well, Walmart is back in the mix, so now it's Oracle and Walmart who will be trusted technology partners in a new TikTok global, of which they'll own twenty percent, and other American investors will supposedly make TikTok's Chinese parent company ByteDance a minority owner going forward. This new entity will be based in the U.S., will reportedly hire twenty five thousand more U.S. workers, and put Oracle in charge of securely hosting U.S. users' data to address concerns over cybersecurity. There's obviously a lot we don't know about this. There's a lot I'm sure even they don't know because they're just announcing things and really trying to figure it out later. We have no idea how any of this will be audited. We don't know how much actual power Oracle and Walmart (laughs) Walmart Walmart. will have (laughs) over TikTok's operations. Uh, So we have no idea about any of this sort of stuff. We have no idea if the algorithm and the underlying code will make its move to our shores, but you can bet it won't. Uh, And it will continue to be coded in a country whose social media platforms double as tools of surveillance and censorship, which was the whole point of doing this to begin with. No, the whole point of doing this was to was two two pronged, mm-hmm. two pronged. One to get back at TikTok for screwing up Trump's little rally mm-hmm. and in selling out the tickets, and the other is to manufacture 
a problem so Trump can get a win. Oh, and and third, third, to give a little bit of uh, love back to Larry Ellison and his yes. fundraising campaign. So this is a three pronged approach. This is a this is Poseidon's trident of bullshit. <laughs> yeah, and if you really want to dig into it, we'll have the links in the show notes. But there are three main points that the article makes: it's a misleading deal, it's a grafty deal, and it's utterly ridiculous. In the news. We haven't really talked about uh, COVID and working from home in a little while, and we're all most well. Most of us are still in COVID and working from home, while other people have just kind of moved on and pretended it doesn't exist and gone back to real life. What's yeah. that like? That must be. I don't nice. know. I that's really my, wish I had one of those be, bucket buckets. That must <laughs> you know? be nice until you end up on the ventilator. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that I, I, you know, the old fuck it bucket. That's yeah. That's, I could Pretty use much one of those. what you need. But yeah. I, I did love this one. Uh, this is an interview with a scientist and mom who had a little secret during her CNN appearance. Uh, Gretchen Goldman, a research director at a science nonprofit, went on Wolf Blitzer's CNN show on Monday to offer commentary on President Trump's latest appointment to the National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration. Let's not get into the politics, but shockingly, she said that this guy's stupid and should never have been put in position. Right. As, you know, most scientists believe about most of his appointees. But, yeah. But uh, as they point out, just below off camera, her smart yellow jacket, she was wearing a tiny pair of shorts and she stresses they were shorts, not underwear, and some famously functional uh, water shoes and the well lit, tasteful room she was speaking from uh, under the desk uh, that you could see was strewn with toys, her computer chair camera balanced on a chair so her husband took a picture of that and she posted side by side on twitter and it went viral because you know this is kind of the reality that we're all dealing with uh so it was a really good article and i just like this one uh this one little bit they asked her have how have you and your husband been handling taking care of the kids while working and she said i feel like the answer is poorly <laughs> she's honest she's honest uh and this is our reality right now she says i typically do two hours of work at night after they're in bed because i just can't during the work day uh because of the nature of my job we couldn't do regular schedules i know some families do like you take them nine to twelve and i'll do twelve to three which is what my wife and i initially started to do but then you know shit just goes out the window <laughs> yeah. we have meetings at different times and some come up that are more rapid response uh so it's not that predictable we've done it haphazardly just to try to make ends meet the kids have gotten a lot of TV, TV. I'm deeply ashamed that the two year old knows how to tell Netflix he's still watching. <laughs> <laughs> Don't be ashamed. We're all with you. Yeah. Welcome. Welcome to the new normal. Yep. I haven't heard anybody say that in a while because <laughs> I think everybody that said it back then has been punched in the face enough times. Yes. Well, Facebook is back in the news in the EU. This is an interesting story. Mm -hmm. uh, did you get a chance to go through this one and read it? I did. I did. Yeah, so uh, some some people over in the EU are not very happy about Facebook uh, exfiltrating some of the data of the EU residents back over the pond, back to the United States. Yes. Yes, and, uh, <laughs> and, and this is literally one person that is doing this. Uh, and, <laughs> you know, I, I, I would like to send her some flowers <laughs> and, uh, and say, Hey, yeah, this is good. This is good. Uh, but Facebook has come out, you know, guns a blazing fists a swinging, however you want, whatever you want to call it and say, yes. well, guys, if you really want to do this, then we're just going to have to not operate in the EU. And I'm like, really? good. Really? Call how their bluff. We, how can we get that done here? <laughs> <laughs> Pretty please. I would Pretty love please. to see that because that would actually destroy Facebook. Because if all of a sudden somebody had to go, if everybody in the EU had to go three weeks without Facebook, they'd just find something else. And that would be that. It would be like the end of the Truman Show. Mm -hmm. It would be like the end of the Truman Show. Everybody's watching. Everybody's watching. And then it's over. And it's like, well, what else is on? Yep. <laughs> you and know? Uh, they wouldn't go back if it came back. Yeah, so this is a giant game of chicken that Facebook is playing with the EU. And mm -hmm. uh, honestly, I hope I hope they don't blink. I hope the EU doesn't blink. But, you know, Me they too. will. They you will. Know, they will, yes, definitely. unfortunately. But it's, it's just one of those things where it's like you think about it and you're like, man, it would be nice if. <laughs> it would be nice if. It would be nice if. I agree. Uh, but you gotta, you gotta, oh, but one last thing, though. Hmm. You have to remember that at least Germany has uh, made them back down and pull the Oculus out for sale in Germany. You can't do that. So little things are eating away at Facebook's power over there. Yeah. You know? Well, uh, you know, good. Good. 
because uh, that's the only place that seems to be challenging anybody. GDPR is the only tool we have right now. So keep at it, EU. Yeah, death by a million zucks. That's right. There we go. Uh, there's some more news coming out of Facebook. Uh, this, this makes them sound very good. Facebook is testing a tool to let users claim their own image rights. They've revealed the Rights Manager for Images, a tool that gives creators the ability to track and moderate where their images appear across Facebook and Instagram. To begin, Facebook is testing that with select partners. They haven't revealed what partners. And we don't know <laughs> select. yet what plans <laughs> they have to open the new Rights Manager to more users. But, you know, there it is. You, uh, you've got a tool. You can upload a CSV file of the image and its metadata, and they can, you can specify where you want to apply copyright, if at all. The, mon the manager will then monitor where the image shows up, and creators can decide to leave the image up, issue a takedown, or block it from certain territories. Now, obviously, there could be issues with this in terms of memes. Uh, we could, you know, if you post Ham's Hog and you've changed it enough yes. times, uh, then what happens? But the other thing that I find interesting about this, and this is not surprising, is yet again, Facebook is basically offloading their job of monitoring to yourself. Yeah. yeah. Uh, the thing about it, this is, it's like, you know, we have a mechanism for this right now. It's called copyright law. And, you know, well, we can we, sue. we had it, we but sue. then there's Pinterest, <laughs> which proves there's the Pinterest. copyright law does not matter at all. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Well, there's therein lies the rub, and also the the court ruling about Ham's Hog last week, which is just utter bullshit. Yes. Uh, <laughs> yeah. So you know where in where does the where does the percentage fall in the the rights manager tool for you know how much has this been well, obviously, modified? It, it, how it's much has it been be, modified? It's going to be a pretty strict interpretation. It's going to be if any change has been made to the image, this is not going to catch it. It's it's yeah. straight up reposting. Yeah, and how does it work with cropping and sizing and things like that? I mean, there's uh, – what's the, the one search engine? Tinai, I believe it's called. Mm -hmm. It does yeah. a pretty good job. You can upload your images and find every instance of it on Pinterest forever. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, used to, I used to do that and then finally gave up the ghost. I think I made about $1,000 tracking <laughs> people down. And when I did the hourly on it, it was I made about $3.75 an hour tracking down those people. So it yeah. just got to be the point where it wasn't worth it. But. Plus with, yeah, I mean, just the general sense of humanity, I'd imagine that most of the people that you reached out to and said, hey, that's my image basically told you to fuck off and it's somehow it's your fault. So it just ends up becoming a psychic burden. Yeah, it really does. It really does. I mean, the only people I ever got uh, money from were blogs and magazines who stole my images and put them in their articles. Yeah. You know, it's, average Joes were just like, oh, fuck yourself. <laughs> yeah, it takes a special kind of person to uh, deal with that sort of stuff all day. We call them lawyers, but uh, yeah, it's just not worth the psychic burden. <laughs> or patent trolls. <laughs> yeah, that too. Uh, we learned a little bit more about uh, another update from Apple that may be of some concern. Uh, they, they consider this a feature on your iPhone, uh, the voice memos. So they're having a moment, apparently, the iPhone voice memos app, uh, because people are using it to uh, record insights and dispatches during the coronavirus crisis. Uh, some people in podcasting are using it to record because they can't think of anything better to do to send things off. Uh, but one thing that people have noticed, and it's a uh, possibly invasive, if you don't label the memo yourself when you're recording it, the app will automatically use your location where the recording took place as its name. So basically, voice memos is tracking your location. And you don't have to be too paranoid to see why that might be a problem. Of course, there's an easy enough fix name yeah. your file. <laughs> uh, but yeah, this, this is a feature they refer to it as location based naming. And it's uh, done because they thought that'll help jog people's memory when they look back through their recordings. Oh, I was here at this time. So that's when I recorded that. So it kind of makes sense. And yeah. again, it's easy to fix. Just name your file something. You can also disable location-based naming by going to settings for voice memos. So much ado and about turn nothing. it off. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's a great feature personally, because if I'm out on a walk and I'm leaving voice memos, it's nice to know when and where I was at. Yes. So I, I, I look at this as a feature. And yeah, if you don't like it, turn it off. Turn it off. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Quibi! Quibi's back in the news! Oh, is oh. it? <laughs> <laughs> this is over at the Wall Street Journal. Quibi explores strategic options, including possible sale. Already! <laughs> yeah. Already! <laughs> oh, my God. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's... Uh, 
I, that's it. That's all I need right there. I mean, yeah. I got a whole bunch of article here that I don't care anything about. You, you don't about. need to. And uh, <laughs> no. the, it was one of the I, – I actually watched the Emmys, and we'll get into that in media. Oh, candy, yeah, but, yeah. But they had the best line. Quibi <laughs> has 10 Emmy nominations this year. It actually won two, shockingly enough. But uh, <laughs> Jimmy Kimmel said, it's the dumbest thing to ever cost a billion dollars. <laughs> yep. That was really good. <laughs> really good. And it uh, – yeah, they've raised $1.75 billion now. So that's, Jesus yeah. Christ. For that. For uh, that. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> and shockingly enough, I have some gaming news for you, Jason. Did you what? I know. I saw this and I thought this was interesting. Microsoft, uh, the Xbox maker, has signed a deal to buy Zenimax Media, one of the largest independent games publishers in operation. Mm -hmm. You may not recognize that name in and of itself, uh, but the studios it owns, you will recognize. Even I recognize them, and I'm not a gamer. It includes id Software, which made Doom and Quake. Probably the last two games I ever played. Uh, Arcane <laughs> Studios, uh, which is Dishonored and Prey. Tango Gameworks, The Evil Within. And Bethesda. 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 That's also a yeah. hospital, right? And a place in Maryland, yes. And a place in Maryland. <laughs> there you go. Uh, which did The Elder Scrolls and Fallout. They're going to pay $7.5 billion in an all-cash deal. Oh, that's good for them. ID mm -hmm. was uh, obviously, you know, one of the the premier places back in the day with Wolfenstein and all those guys, and of course Quake and Quake Three Arena and mm -hmm. Rocket Arena, my personal favorite. So, uh, yeah, I, they're just slurping people up right now. Fire sale, get them while the getting's good, since nobody's going to work. That's right. <laughs> yeah. And this one, uh, this one came in through uh, our friend Chris Lockhead. He sent this over yesterday. Amadon, <laughs> Amadon, Amadon, Amadon. <laughs> Amazon details its low bandwidth sidewalk neighborhood network coming to Echo and Tile devices soon. Now they mm -hmm. have. We talked about this when it first came out, and mm -hmm. we're like, "Does anybody really need this?" <laughs> and apparently, Amazon thinks they do. And so there, this is the whole mesh network where the you know everybody's. Echoes and, you know, ladies in the tubes and things like that will all create a mesh network in your neighborhood. So you can walk down the street with your dog with its little, you know, little tile collar. And if it, if little Fido gets away, you can find it using the neighbor's access points. Right. And okay. uh, yeah, uh, asked for this, said no one ever. No, like it'd be one thing if it wasn't a low bandwidth network and if we were blanketing entire neighborhoods. So perhaps the less uh, the, the more disadvantaged of us could actually then get uh, free access to the Internet. But that's not what this is. Yeah, I, this so. is just strange. I, just I, yeah, find I this don't get it. Thing is strange. I mean, you know, it, it's it's uh, to, to quote you, Jason, it's kind of neat. Yeah, and, and I'm sure the engineers were like, let's see if we can do this because this would be cool. Uh, but I can't imagine much usage for it. Yeah, I mean, I, I don't know if I'm missing the whole point of it, but it doesn't seem like it's required. All right. I mean, I, I get I get what they're trying to do with, you know, okay, I can bounce from neighbor to neighbor, so that little device is always online no matter where it goes or picks up, you know, where the spots are. But, yeah, uh, is this something that we really need? I don't nope. see it. I it's don't just see it. it's it's really just to facilitate more tracking of little devices that we've talked about ad nauseum <laughs> that we we are tired of being tracked by little devices everywhere. This just facilitates more of it. That's so, true. Yeah. Everyone needs a world-class VPN. Grumpy Old Geeks recommends private internet access to protect your online privacy and identity. Private Internet Access never keeps any records of their users' online activities, so you can be assured that you have complete privacy and nobody knows what you're doing online. No matter your technical skills, Private Internet Access is one of the easiest VPN apps out there. All it takes to connect is just one click or tap and your data will be encrypted instantly. With just one Private Internet Access VPN subscription, you can connect up to 10 devices at the same time. Go to GOG.show slash VPN and sign up today. For a limited time only, you can get our favorite VPN for just $2.69 a month when you sign up for two years. GOG.show slash VPN. That's GOG.show slash VPN. <laughs> Okay, Brian, let's just get this fucking thing over with. 
I have to get this over with now. Okay. Musician, author, and speaker Amanda fucking Palmer has launched a weekly podcast, The Art of Asking Everything. And uh, this comes from, you know, uh, Pod News. They say, of note, the show is entirely paid for by over 15,000 people on Patreon. Well, as of this writing, I went and looked this morning. Nope, not over 15,000. It's down to 14,842. So... Still not insignificant. No, it's not insignificant. And we've talked ad nauseum about Amanda Palmer and her Patreon and how she, you know, basically stole her audience from the music label that paid millions of dollars to make her a star and then went out on her own. And uh, now she has a podcast. Great. Yeah. uh, Look, I I don't like Amanda Palmer. I'm not a fan. I don't like her music. Uh, I think that her the only issue I have with it is that she keeps running around trumpeting that she built this all herself. She did not. And that's the issue. So, yeah, I I will not be listening to this podcast. Yeah, no, it's like people saying Reply All built themselves from the ground up when, nope, they took a lot of NPR money to make that show. And then they buggered off and took the audience with them. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, our tax money at work. Uh, Well, Peacock is in the news again. Mm -hmm. Have you signed up for Peacock? Um, No. Do you plan on it? No. No. (laughs) There's nothing on Peacock that I'm interested in. Okay. Same here. Same here. Uh, Well, uh, they have finally gotten their Roku app together. They've cut a deal with Roku, so the app is going to be coming soon to you Roku-enabled devices. Now, the only reason I give a shit about this is because this actually helps get HBO Max onto Roku, which is what I really want because I like HBO Max (laughs) because I pay for it and there's a lot of stuff on there I want to watch. And some of it might be hate-watching like that Wolves show that we'll talk about in a second. (laughs) Um, But yeah, I just, I pay for HBO Max. I pay for my Roku. Guys, get it sorted and figured out. So this helps get that uh, pushed through, I'm guessing. That's what everybody's saying, because Roku's stock went through the roof after this deal with Peacock. So I don't know. Maybe it's time to buy a little more Roku stock, because when the HBO Max things goes through, maybe it'll jump up a little bit more. Maybe. Maybe. We'll see. Maybe. (laughs) Uh, I watched the, uh, what I guess I'm calling the virtual Emmys. Um, I'm not big on award shows, but my wife is, so they're always going to be on. But I was curious this time around because I was like, well, how are they going to deal with this? Um, And it was actually pretty good. Uh, I thought they pulled it off pretty well. People were at home and and for the most part, and they would have somebody show up in a very funny hazmat suit delivering uh, the Emmy if they won. Uh, There was a write-up about it. The weirdest thing about the pandemic Emmys was how normal they felt. And so, yeah, and I thought that was kind of true. It's, it's, we're so used to this uh, life that we're living now that it just felt normal, even though it was all pretty weird. Now, there is one thing I have to say. Can we stop with the fucking pandemic security theater? (laughs) Okay. Uh, uh, Because some of these shows, like Schitt's Creek and and some of the other ones, Uh they got together in, in a, in a big place together, the entire cast, you know, and, Fine. Put down a little disclaimer on the bottom saying we've all been tested. The but let's in- not pretend yeah. because everybody is sitting six feet apart and everybody has a mask on until they win something. And then they all throw off their masks and they all start hugging. Which yeah. is it? You know, that's that part of it. Well, there are two parts about the whole Shit's Creek thing that really pissed me off. One is that they obviously knew how many they were going to win because they had the girl from the commercial in the hazmat suit standing there giving them all the things. They had a microphone set up that they just put right there. It's not like everybody didn't know. There was a shit ton of people off camera doing you know, doing the thing. This wasn't one of those home rigs that they sent to everybody. This was a professionally lit setup that they had going on there. They were all in the room. There was you know, literally no surprise going on there. And like you said, the fucking stupid security theater, all we thought about and all we were screaming as we hope every single person in that room gets it just because (laughs) of the bullshit that they were spewing you know well it wasn't just them it was a lot of them i mean a lot of uh, some people were just at home by themselves or just their family but a lot of people had gotten together with groups and that's fine it's fine if you're doing that just admit that you're doing what you're doing and like i said give us a disclaimer you know everybody in here has been tested or we're all part of the pod we've been taping the show together for weeks now blah 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 just uh, we're not stupid and don't put on the masks and sit six feet apart for two camera shots but then next thing you know you guys are both like chugging off a bottle of tequila together we're not idiots we get it we know what's going on don't do it for our sake don't do it because you think the people need need to see that we're wearing masks we don't 
Yeah. Okay. That and just the, the fake responses from the Shit's Creek people just piss me off. <gasps> oh my god, we won again? Oh, I'm getting the vapors. I'm getting the vapors. No, I, Fuck I, you. I find that actually, I think that's believable because I don't think that they thought that they were going to sweep. I think as they kept going on and on and on, it was just like, oh my god, we're winning everything. So I found that somewhat believable. I'm not going to yeah. shit on them for that. I don't know, did you ever watch that show? No, I heard it's very good though. Yeah, I'm not going to. I'll pass. I'll pass. <laughs> That's fine. Uh, I did watch the Go-Go's documentary on Showtime. It was excellent. Highly oh, recommend good. it. Um, don't have too much to say about it. It was just, it was good. It's all, it, it's, it's so long ago now that it's hard to remember that they actually started off as a punk rock band. And they totally were. Okay. So you go back and see that, which is great. All right. I'll check um, it out. And other good news, Ted Lasso has been renewed for season two at Apple. Smart move on Apple's part because it's actually a really good show, which they don't have many of. No, they don't. No, they <laughs> don't. Uh, speaking of shows that they have at Apple, Long Way Up, I mm -hmm. discovered on there as I was done with my Ted Lasso. And I'm like, let's see what the hell's on here. And I found Long Way Up, which is the, you know, the 20 year on sequel to uh, Long, Long Way, way Round and Long Way round. Down. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Long Way Round was the first one. Long Way Down was the second one. And Long Way Up is the third one. And man, they had to do some vocal gymnastics on that theme song to get Long Way Up to, <laughs> to work. And I don't think they did. And this show could, they didn't need to make this show. It is, they're trying to rekindle the, the magic of the first one. Because let's be honest, the second one was terrible. Long Way Down was no good. They brought their wives along with them. Or it's just, or, or you and God his forbid. Wife. Oh, God, it was terrible. <laughs> she didn't know how to ride. It was nothing. And on this one, like at the beginning of it, it's so funny. Charlie Borman, the big motorcycle rider. I, you know, he loves riding his motorcycles, but he's just not very good at it because, you know, he's, he crashes twice before they even start filming and he's like got broken bones and all this crap. I'm like, Charlie, you just really don't know how to ride a motorcycle. It's fine that you like it, but let's not pretend you're any good at it. So, all right. <laughs> uh, it's, it's, I'm, I've three episodes in. It's, painful to watch because they're trying to ride around uh, or they're trying to ride up from South America to Los Angeles on these electric Harley Davidsons. And most of the show so far is three episodes of trying to figure out where to find a fucking plug. That's really it. <laughs> <laughs> That's kind of a metaphor for current life, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. But I do have to say the trucks that they built, uh, I think it's Rivian built these custom trucks for the, the chase crew. Mm -hmm. They're really cool. <laughs> Those are cool. The Harley Davidson's are cool too, but they can only go like 200 miles, but all in all, you know, watching some of the tech with the trucks is pretty cool. They made these things in like three weeks. Right. But uh, yeah, so far it's just like, come on guys, let's either buy a new bike or get, Get a plug, seriously. Right. And speaking yeah. of things that didn't need to be made, HBO Max has announced that they are renewing Ridley Scott's Raised by Wolves for a second season. Okay. Uh, <clears throat> I went back and I watched uh, two more episodes of the show. I'm not watching the show anymore. I don't okay. care. <laughs> I don't understand the point. I'm not engaged. I'm not interested. I just don't give a shit. <laughs> okay. Yeah. All righty. That saves me some time. Well, I, I actually have the time because HBO Max is still not on Roku, so <laughs> fuck it. Uh, but I've been watching Lovecraft Country. I watched uh, episode six last night. That show is so, so good. And I have to say, episode five has some of the best horror special effects I've ever seen in my life. They're not, I don't know how much of it's practical and how much of it's CG. I'm guessing most of it's CG, but it is so seamless and so good and so disgusting. It's great. <laughs> Honestly, this is, this is my favorite show on TV right now. I love this thing. Right. And I've kept up with Star Trek Lower Decks. I know I'm in the minority in thinking that this is actually a very funny and pretty good show. However, to give ammunition to all the haters, uh, season one, episode six, Terminal Provocations, was absolutely painful. Yeah, they've been painful since it episode was two. One of was the bad. worst things I've ever seen. It was horrifically bad. Um, damn. Too bad. I wanted the show to be good. <laughs> yeah, I did too. I've been I've watched them all, but I think I'm going to stop just in case that they're looking at these numbers, thinking that that it, it would be a good idea to renew it. Yeah, which which it's not. <laughs> I, I guess uh, you know we got to vote with our wallets, as it were. <laughs> yeah, vote with your eyeballs at this yeah. point. But man, yeah. yeah, no, it is so bad, and there's just nothing else to watch on Thursday nights. It's like, come on, Ted yeah. Lasso is only you know like thirty minutes long. Damn Speaking it. of that. <laughs> Because there was nothing else to watch and I didn't want to try something new, I went back and uh, randomly rewatched the 1984 David Lynch version of Dune. 
Which one, though? Did you watch the short one or the long one? The short one, because the long oh. one is only available from Sweden, and uh, that wouldn't have involved uh, thinking about it ahead of time, and this was completely an impulse view. So Okay. <laughs> yeah. Uh, you know, does not have legs. Uh, they th- What they did with the story, I, I thought, was pretty impressive, uh, condensing that entire book into the short version of this movie. They, they, got, they hit all the major points, which was nice. It has not aged well. The acting is horrific, uh, which is stunning because it's quite the cast. So you kind of have to throw that at David Lynch's feet. Uh, because well, they're how, also how you- young then. They, they've gotten much better as actors as they've gotten older. This is an old-ass Well, movie. not everybody <laughs> is young. There's some old people in there <laughs> that should have done Patrick Stewart's in there for christ's sake he was like 25 back then <laughs> looks exactly the same yeah he's he, he came out that way he pretty much came out that way <laughs> yeah so and the special effects boy uh, you could you can say oh they didn't age well but i would argue that those special effects were actually bad for 1984 oh yeah they sucked yeah. they sucked during the day yeah definitely. they were horrible so. <laughs> they were bad <laughs> and speaking of oldies i did forget about this one hackers turned 25 last week oh Man, I remember going to see that in Santa Monica with my girlfriend the day it opened, the morning it opened, first showing <laughs> at the movie theater in Santa Monica, and I've seen it probably a hundred times since then. I think that movie has legs, but that's just me. I, I have not rewatched it since I saw it originally. Really? Oh man, it's fun. You should go back. Great soundtrack, man. Oh, One of great the best soundtrack. soundtracks. Yeah, really good. Yeah. And I've been thinking about this since we're recording on Tuesday, September twenty second, and uh it is the first day of fall here in you know north america and i was thinking about this song from rasputina it's uh, it was called eight, 1816 the year without a summer mm-hmm. and uh i don't know if you've ever heard that song i was a huge rasputina mark back in the day uh <laughs> back when i you know i liked the gothy stuff back then and it's crazy uh melora the singer of rasputina she's 54 yeah wow. well we're not young people anymore no we're old <laughs> Uh, but, uh, yeah, I, I just went back and I was listening to the song because it dawned on me that, you know, we really didn't have a summer this year. Didn't have it, much of a spring either, to be honest. Well, spring lasted for four <laughs> years and summer lasted for 10, like 10 minutes. Hmm. And you know, I didn't leave the house. It was either too hot, too smoky, or just too damn depressing because you couldn't leave the house because you might die. So I, I think 2020 is also the year without a summer, but I don't know. You got out more than I did, I guess. You got on I your suppose. bike ride. I take a bike ride. <laughs> yeah, it's more than I did until I just got my bike. I've been out on like 10 bike rides this summer. Uh, but I throw this out there because if there's any fans who are uh, Rasputina fans, like our show fans who listened to Rasputina back in the day, there is an album out there called Unknown. This was the seventh album by Rasputina, and it was only released on CD. And it was kind of journaling um, Melora's rise after she basically got her identity stolen and stalked and all this crazy shit that happened to her back in uh, back in the day. And uh, if anybody has a copy of this, <laughs> please get in touch with me because she's never going to release it on any digital platform because it's kind of antithetical to what happened to her. And God even knows what she's doing nowadays. It's impossible to find her. So uh, if anybody has a copy of this album or knows how to get it, please get in touch with me. Jay at jpd.me. I really want it. All right. At the library. Well, I read a, I reread a great old book. Uh, I'm not necessarily going to recommend this to anyone that is triggered by end of the world scenarios or basically life right now outside your window. Uh, but if you're up for braving it, uh, The Postman by David Brin. Uh, ignore the movie. Uh, forget about that. If you ever saw it and you thought that was a stupid story and what the hell, Kevin Costner with your hair. Oh, that um, was it. I was thinking, <laughs> is that the Kevin Costner movie? <laughs> it is, but it was a book first and it is an amazing book. It's one of my favorite books of all time. Uh, Post uh, apocalyptic, obviously a uh, very, even though this was written many, 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 many years ago. Boy, oh boy, does it feel current and topical. All right. You know, the dystopian <laughs> fiction, the gift that keeps on giving. Right. <laughs> and I'm putting this in when, in here because this is just vindication for me, personally, <laughs> at least. This comes from the New Statement, New Statesman, and it's called Why Goodreads is Bad for Books. And it's a very long article and talks about different things, but I am going to like just read you this one paragraph. Ah, this feels good. 
Goodreads today looks and works much as it did when it launched. The design is like a teenager's 2005 MySpace page. (laughs) Cluttered, random, and unintuitive. Books fail to appear when searched for. Messages fail to send. And users are flooded with updates in their timelines that have nothing to do with the books they want to read or have read. Many now use it purely to track their reading rather than get recommendations or build a community. It should be my favorite platform, one user told me, but it's completely useless. (laughs) <laughs> Vindication. Thank you, you statesman. There you go. Moron of the week. Our moron of the week was recommended by both TJ and Koi Zero on Twitter, who both sent this in with hashtag Darwin Awards. A woman fell out of her car window while filming a Snapchat video on the M25 a freeway in England. Yep. In a post on Twitter, the roads policing unit said it was only by luck she wasn't seriously injured or killed, adding the hashtag no words. <laughs> <laughs> well, there we go. Darwin Awards for the win. There you go. Feedback loop. Over at Patreon, we've got Robert. Just poor Robert, all alone, all alone. But over at PayPal, we've got Nicholas, Michelle, Jeff, Michael, John, Tom, John, Jeffrey, Mark, Matthias, Ryan, Andrew, Joseph, and Stavros. And a bunch of more successful stock trades from Martin over on the Discord channel. (laughs) And you go, Martin, man. You're kicking it for us. Woo! Keeping this show afloat. (laughs) Yeah. Amanda Palmer's got Patreon. We've got Martin. Exactly. (laughs) So Martin's our secret weapon. (laughs) And speaking of uh, Discord, over on our Discord channel, KillerQ09 wrote in, Holy shit, way for Apple to downplay this new awesome iOS 14 feature. Takes me back to the Android days, but better. Uh, I would have a feeling that you guys will find this very handy for some reason. There are many actions to choose from, and this is how to use iPhone backtap custom controls for shortcuts, accessibility, and system actions. It's pretty cool, I got to say. So I used to use a triple click on the, the right button, the power button type of thing. But mm-hmm. now I just triple tap on the back and it'll, it'll toggle the color off and on for the display. So it'll go black and white or color depending on my mood. And then, of course, FASM, FASM, writes, why black and white, may I ask? FASM must be a new listener. We <laughs> covered this on the show many, many moons ago. And I'm going to link to an article of uh, basically from our friend Tristan Harris uh, over at Human Tech uh, called Take Control. And he says, colorful icons give our brains shiny rewards every time we unlock. Set your phone to grayscale to remove those positive reinforcements. It helps many people check their phone less. And I have to agree. That's why I do it. Right. There you go. And, uh, yep. And over at Twitter, Nathan writes, if you haven't already found this, you can create your own widget stack. You don't have to use the smart stack version created by Apple. I love this for making the home screen more usable in iOS 14. And he sent us a video, and then I tracked down an article over at The Verge on how to do it. So, uh, yeah, I'll get on that. You know, I've got to say for the first time ever, Android users have a point. We, we, the iPhone has just stolen stuff that they've had forever. Of course, our phones don't get owned all the time, but you know. Just every now and again. (laughs) And Ivan wrote in, hi, listening to episode 473 about Twitter enforcing you to have a strong pass. You can actually do it with a part of the hash being have I pin pwned service. Then they won't know that pass is weak or not. But there is a good chance that if it was in there, it was in some breach before. I doubt that they're actually (laughs) going to those lengths to actually run it past have I been pwned. They're probably just they've got a plain text copy somewhere. They could do that, but they aren't. Yeah, maybe they kept metadata on it. It's four characters and sounds like a dog. (laughs) Something like that. Travis writes in, I'm interested in flinging uh, flinging a couple hundred dollars of cryptocurrency investing. When you can, would you guys talk about it a little more for us non-techie folks? Well, we've spent a couple (laughs) years talking about uh, cryptocurrency. uh, And if you'd like to throw your money away, can I recommend GOG.show slash donate? Amen to that. (laughs) At least you'd get the knowledge and you'd keep us going longer. If you must, you can use Coinbase. It's a decent app to invest in any range of sketchy as shit cryptocurrencies that will get shut down immediately by most governments if they actually get any real traction. Yes. Skip the crypto. (laughs) Give us your money instead. You will. It will actually do better for you. I'm yes. telling you right now. Good luck. <sighs> and JC writes in, ha, 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 ha. This loser has to watch what he says now that his ass is owned. And this is a link from Vanity Fair. Joe Rogan apologizes for spreading bogus wildfire conspiracy. I fucked up. Yes, now that he has corporate masters that have paid him tons and tons and tons of money, guess what? You can't just say whatever you want anymore. 
Well, he can. He just has to go back and fix it later. Yeah. <laughs> but okay, I, and it, I, if this was retroactive, he would never get to do a show again because he would have to go back and, fix and apologize for every single yeah. episode. <laughs> uh, and DST writes in, but I thought my phone wasn't spying on me. And this is a link to Bloomberg. Facebook accused of watching Instagram users through cameras. No, we said they weren't listening to you. Yes. That was, we never said anything about new. watching. That's why yeah. we all have tape over our cameras. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they are being sued again for allegedly spying on Instagram users, this time through the unauthorized use of their mobile phone cameras. The lawsuit springs from media reports in July that the photo sharing app appeared to be accessing iPhone cameras even when they weren't actively being used. Facebook has denied the reports and blamed a bug, which it said it was correcting for triggering what it described as false notifications that Instagram was accessing iPhone cameras. Uh, New Jersey the Instagram user Brittany Con- Conditi contends the app's use of the camera is intentional and done for the purpose of collecting lucrative and valuable data on its users that it would not otherwise have access to by obtaining extremely private and intimate personal data on their users, including the privacy of their own homes. They were able to collect valuable insights and market research, according to the complaint. Uh, no, no, they didn't. No, they didn't. <laughs> Sorry, Brittany. <laughs> Yeah, You post the inside of your home already. I know. What else do they need? <laughs> you give them you, everything they want. That's why I don't believe any of these things. I actually believe if it did happen at all, it was a bug because you willingly give people – you are willingly <laughs> handing this over. They do not need to hack their phones and open themselves up to lawsuits. The fact that you installed Instagram right there is is proof positive that your lawsuit has no legs to stand on, period. No, none <laughs> yep, whatsoever. So, uh, You invite yeah. Dracula into your home. He's going to bite you in the neck. That's, a, that's how it goes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So I don't think that they're going to win that lawsuit because I don't think that's actually happening. So No, no. Yep. And over at GOG.show, Kevin writes in, in case Brian hasn't taken the time to watch this guy's videos on various bands and genres, I'm sure he'd enjoy them. And it's a YouTube link. And he says, keep grumping. Did yeah, you get to I, watch it? I checked it out. It's pretty interesting. Uh, uh, good deep dives on, on stuff that I'm kind of into. So I will uh, keep a bookmark of this. And probably, honestly, I'll totally forget about it and never watch it again. That's well, the reality. You should, subs- but you should subscribe and get I, notifications. I don't subscribe to any YouTube <laughs> channel. <laughs> Oh, there that's not go. true. I subscribe to a bunch of kids' channels because that's what I watch a lot of. That's what you to do nowadays. <laughs> yep. Uh, no sec writes in. This feels so fucked up that I can't even describe it. What the fuck? Uh, gig economy company lunches Uber, but for evicting people. Yeah. Yeah. This is it's, uh, here's the thing about this. It's a company called Civil C I V V L, mm-hmm. and they say evicting people is the fastest growing money making gig due to COVID nineteen and. These guys are their go-betweens. They're in-betweens. Right now, you can get uh, process serving gigs or mm-hmm. somebody who is basically helping take granny's furniture out of their house. But you have to pay $35 just to sign up for their service as, you know, the, the sign-up fee. And people are complaining that they're not getting enough work being horrible human beings. So, uh, yeah, all around, this is just kind of gross. But, you know? Yep. yep. It's all they're doing is basically, you know, they're they're an app for what most people usually you do Craigslist for. It's like we need process servers and we need people for evictions. Yep. They're just trying to, you know, make it more techy. They're, they're web 2.0ing it. Yeah. And they're <laughs> the way they make their money is that $35 sign up fee. So, you know. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. John writes in, hello and thanks. I was cleaning up some really old bookmarks. Most of the sites have since disappeared, but TalkShoe.com is apparently still a thing for podcasters. As experts in podcasting, any thoughts about using TalkShoe? Oh. I'm sure Jason has a thousand, so let me try to beat him to some of the main ones. Um, define still a thing, first off, because is it still a thing? I don't know. I looked, I, I loaded it up. I, I don't, I've never heard of any of those shows. Uh, most of the show artwork thumbnails are pixelized. That's, so that's not a great sign. I'm sure it's fine if you just want to get a podcast out there, but I'm sure it's mostly crap if you're going to be serious about podcasting. Learn the basics, go with best in class. Not a super cheap all in one solution. You'll generally get what you pay for until you're paying far too much, of course. Uh, for instance, transcription of all your podcasts is included by TalkShoe. We've looked into transcription. Transcription. It's incredibly expensive. There's no way that's free. 
No, it's not. This is a garbage site. Uh, just skip it. Yeah, I mean, I'm just going to tell you right now. Skip it. Uh, yeah, transcription is going to cost you. If you want human transcription, it's going to cost you a lot. If you want machine transcription, just go get Descript and go from there. There's there's all sorts of stuff here. But well, all, all you have to remember here, to, just to your question, because we could talk for hours on this, TalkShoe.com is still not a thing for podcasters. Move along. There you go. Ralph writes in, hi, Grump. So sorry that California is still burning. Wish we could share some of the cool, moist weather here in Baltimore with you. Maybe okay. Dave can arrange to bring you some on his next visit. It looks like YouTube has delivered a win to humans over AI. And this is a link from Mashable. YouTube puts human content moderators back to work. So they're actually hiring some people again. At the start of the pandemic, YouTube had to reduce the staff and workload of in-office human moderators. So rather than relying on the 10,000 person workforce, the company gave broader content moderation power to automated systems that are able to recognize videos with harmful content and remove them immediately. If that were true, we wouldn't have had so many stories about it over the past exactly. few months. So that led to the removal of 11 million videos between April and June, a higher number than usual, because they erred on the side of caution, which meant they removed more videos that actually broke no rules. So yay, woohoo. And apparently they're just basically starting to bring back in some of that workforce and bring back in some people. So that's AI nice. is people. Yep. AI is people. Mm -hmm. Barbara writes in a couple of shows ago, you were commenting about social media and suicide. You said if they take the post down and the person kills themselves, that the platform would be facing lawsuits. My question under what law? As far as I know, they are in the clear. Precisely the problem with no regulation for cyberspace. However, this is a time when I would love to be wrong. I bet the response will be grumpy, right? <laughs> Stay safe and wash your hands. Thanks. Yeah, well, I don't think there is a law, and the argument no. is always they're just a platform. They're just a platform. You know what, though? It, it, it opens them up for some precedent-setting law. Yes. Because, you know, if, if – that happened to me, I would sure as hell sue the shit out of them under whatever grounds I could find. You know, I would I would say, hit the library, guys, find me something that I can take these guys down with. Uh, but if there are any lawyers out there who have any, uh, you know, uh, insight, insight to this, that would be nice. Um, but yeah, I think Barbara might actually be right. And I might have been just talking out of my ass in a in, in a hopeful way. I was being optimistic for once. And it turns out mm -mm. I'm not good at being optimistic. <laughs> yeah. Keep in mind that we just talk shit here. We don't actually have any <laughs> basis for anything. It's, you well, know, it's a podcast. Sometimes, we're, sometimes we're just we a do. podcast. Sometimes we've got some, sometimes some insight. That's true. But no, I, I seem to remember that conversation and we were just kind of spitballing it that surely they, they, you would think that they would have some responsibility for this and somebody could sue. But, uh, you know, you're right. It's just a platform. We all so. click OK on the EULA. So. Yep. And Drawer writes in, thanks for keeping it up. I bought another Echo to use as a stereo pair. A bit disappointed on that. The stereo works only on music from within the device, not when the lady in the tube speaks, and not when using it as a speaker for my phone. It just keeps on using a single speaker for those. A huge disappointment for me. I should have bought the cheapest Alexa and a soundbar for the same money, I think. Well, that is disappointing to hear, but maybe they'll solve that in the next iteration of the software. Who knows? Mm -hmm. uh, on a different topic, I hate Apple New Watch SE. It's destroyed the secondhand market for me. I have the Five, previously to upgrade to the six. I knocked 30% off, sell, sell the old one and buy the new. Now 35% off is the price of a new SE. Oh, No, no one wants to buy used five if they can buy a new SE. Trust me, I'm trying. The best offer I got so far is less than 50% from the price I paid less than a year ago for me. So no upgrade. Keep up the great work. Although it took forever, both the mugs and masks arrived and are great. You're Israeli fan, not on Spotify. <laughs> <laughs> oh man i didn't even think about that oh because what i generally do is when i do the uh, apple watch upgrade i send in my old watch and do the trade-in program and mm. just take that and they take it off the the other one but the six has nothing over the five that i really care about so there, there's literally nothing in there that makes me want to go Ooh, i really need that right so whatevs whatevs quibble writes in you guys have seen this right Tesla owner in Canada charged with sleeping while driving over 90 miles an hour. And this is uh, from The Verge. A Tesla Model S owner in Alberta, Canada, was charged with dangerous driving after being pulled over for sleeping while traveling at speeds of 93 miles an hour. The case raises questions about Tesla's partially automated driving system, autopilot, and driver complacency. And the funny thing about this is they were the, the car sped up when the cop got behind them and flashed <laughs> the lights. It's like, I'm out of here. Fuck this noise. <laughs> yeah, interesting that it would do that. And here's the problem that I had. 
Um, and, and yes, of course, obviously, we as consumers and as humans should be less stupid. But if you look around the world, we're not. And if you call it autopilot and it's marketed as a self-driving car, what the fuck are we actually supposed to expect from people? Words matter. Don't call it autopilot if it's not an autopilot. Don't call it a self-driving car because if we're not supposed to use it as a self-driving car, people are dumb. Of course they're going to do it. Of course. Yes. Of course. Assisted, assisted lane keeping per chance or something yeah. like that. Don't, words matter. Well, they used to. They, they used to. They don't anymore. They literally don't matter anymore. Yeah. <laughs> And uh, Barrett writes in, who would have guessed that Sheriff Joe was a yif lover? Uh, Joe Arpeo welcomes furries to Arizona, then is told what furries are. <laughs> This is very funny. <laughs> Former Maricopa County Sheriff Joe Ar Arpeo. I always get his – I can never say his name it's right. It's I, I, I want to say Arpeggio every time I see it, but that must be the music <laughs> background. So now himself a convicted criminal is among America's most plain-spoken racists and bigots. So it was a surprise when he issued a warm personal welcome to visitors hoping to make it to the 2021 furry convention in Phoenix. Awesome. Hey, good luck organizing the Arizona Furry Convention, he begins, though he pronounces it Fury, suggesting he's not totally certain what he's been asked to talk about. It's for animal lovers, he adds by way of an explanation. <laughs> nice. Oh, my God. This is like the, the greatest trolling of all time. I wonder if somebody just did like take out an R when they, they tried to get it through. It's awesome. a Fury Convention. You are full of rage and fury, my man. This is yes. right up your alley. That's right. Wow. Scott writes in, if you've not watched The Social Dilemma on Netflix, it's a must-watch must for anyone that gets on the internet. It's 100% of everything you've been saying since the start. Keep up the great work, guys. You're the only sanity that I can find in my life each week in this world that is just going insane. Now, I love when we get these notes in, and I, I, I think we need to actually preface this. We usually take these out. Yeah. Um, when somebody writes in a response to the show that is not the latest and greatest one. <laughs> We get these all the time, so we uh, we have to send out lots of emails and say, yeah, yeah, we covered that in the latest episode. And they're like, oh, there's a new episode? Which means everybody, go to GOG.show slash subscribe. So you get the latest and greatest episodes as they come out. That's all yes. I'm saying. And we have a couple more comments about old episodes, so let's just throw them in really quick because I thought yep. two of these were funny. Ron Lanier writes in, that awful Lanier guy in Social Dilemma does not represent all with the last name Lanier. <laughs> yes. <laughs> and Aaron writes in, Jason, thank you for your mouth noise editing. You're welcome, Aaron. <laughs> and Jason writes in, episode 472, you mentioned how AI is so bad at recognizing sarcasm. In human terms, loss of the ability to recognize sarcasm can be an early sign of dementia. Apparently, it takes fairly high-level cogn cognition to recognize the subtle humor sarcasm brings. Yes, that's a compliment. So AI isn't non-functional. It's demented. <laughs> Stay grumpy and sarcastic. It's good for you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, and Jason, you. another Jason writes in, or maybe the same one, father of the year that I am. I heard you say that it was funny to try to have the lady in the tube translate 100, 100, 100 in Welsh. So I tried it. Now my nine-year-old is asking me what that word means. Oh, yes. <laughs> Be careful around the kids with the lady in the tubes. All right. And Gabriel writes in spider webs on drugs. Wish there were more pics. And this is a link to medium, <laughs> a spider on LSD and a journey to build the perfect web. Now this thing is ancient this is like recycled recycled news because this is like from back from in 1980 the 80s. <laughs> yeah this is back in the 80s and i i see this pop up every now and again where somebody rediscovers it and they see the pictures of you know they put spiders on all different types of drugs and look what it did to their webs you know it's it's cute it's cool it's yeah, cute. it's cool i like it um yeah yeah and it's it's fun that it keeps coming back up because it means it has legs eight of them actually so yeah. go check it out <laughs> And signals all are, are all red, writes in me again. I heard you talking about the sunken data centers on uh, the show. And Jason wondered why they put it in the ocean rather than just keep it on land and pump water around it. My cousin is actually involved with some of this in his career. According to him, one reason they are looking into putting data centers deep in the ocean isn't just for cooling. It's an attempt to protect critical systems against outside threats, mainly natural disasters such as EMP geomagnetic radiation, like what happened in 1859 with the Carrington event. We are overdue for another, but 
but also man-made threats as well. I don't know too much about these projects, but I do know that major tech companies and government entities are researching it. Hmm. And as an interesting side note to that, because uh, my kid is so into space right now, he he comes to me every morning and wants to go look at the new space news, daddy. So I bring up like <laughs> space.com and we see if there's any new news. Uh, our sun has started a new cycle, which means we're overdue for some solar uh, solar flare storms, which can fuck with our electronics. So makes sense. Yes, they can. Mm-hmm. And you know what can else can fuck with a uh, data center underwater? Sharks. A chainsaw. <laughs> chainsaw. You just cut the tube. Cut the cut the series of tubes that go to it. The EMP won't matter if somebody just comes along and goes snip snip to the cable. But yeah, I'm just saying they're they're they might be protecting against one thing, but are they protecting against the other? Ah, oh, but they've got trained killer dolphins, Jason. Oh yes, it. killer dolphins. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> Over at iTunes, Aaron the Thomas writes in with a five star. Love the show. It's the highlight of my week. Jason and Brian provide a bit of relief in these crazy weird ass times. Love Bittner's contribution and when Seth pops by. Love the TV and movie reviews and moron of the week. Stay grumpy, friends. I'm sorry. Stay grumpy, fiends. fiends. That's right. All right. <laughs> and Makito 1085 gives us another five star rating. Most entertaining tech podcast. Have been listening for years. These two bring a much needed sense of reality to tech news and life in general. I look forward to the shows every week. Keep up the excellent work. We shall. And if you want your question or comment read on the show, head over to GOG.show slash contact and send us your feedback or questions that we can read on the air. And if you're so inclined, please head over to GOG.show slash review and toss us a five star and snarky review. And if you're listening to us on the Overcast player, click those stars. We're moving on up. Closing shout out. I got a closing shout out to our friend Michaela over on the Discord channel and uh, listener of the show, longtime listener. Michaela really helped us out with all of the technical setup for Discord because we're just old dumb fucks and can't figure out what's what. So thank you, Michaela, for getting all of that in order. We really appreciate it. We do. And you're much more woke than us. So thank you for keeping us on our toes with that as well, because, you know, we're old. Uh, my shout out, I guess, is for uh, Major League Baseball, believe it or not. I- I'm shocked. We're in the home stretch here. They- they've managed to do a, a, well, not a full season, but a, a shortened season, not in a bubble uh, without uh, too much problems. So I'm pretty impressed and kind of looking forward to the World Series and uh, the playoffs and all of that sort of stuff, even though it's, it's a miracle it's happening, I suppose. And so, yay, it's something to watch. Okay. I was watching, uh, we turned on football the other day. There were a lot of people in the stands. Yeah. I don't know how that one's going to go. I don't know, man. It was like college football and we're like, is this an old game? And then I'm like, no, look at all the spaces there. But then we were like, they panned to the end zone and the end zone was like full. And I'm like, what the hell? Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. Well, you know, it's football. Yeah. Fuck (laughs) it. We're all going to die anyway. Until next time, I'm Jason DeFilippo. And I'm Brian Schulmeister. Thanks for listening to Grumpy Old Geeks. This show is a labor of love, but your support keeps the show going. If you like the show, please visit GOG.show slash donate to help us out. We'll love you forever. Or visit GOG.show slash shop and pick up some good old-fashioned GOG swag. If you can't do that, please pass the show along to a friend. Word of mouth is the only way the show grows, so spread the grump far and wide. Show notes for this episode are at GOG.show slash 474. From there you can find links to old episodes, leave feedback, ask questions, donate to the show, buy our swag, and get links to stuff we like. Stay grumpy and stay six feet away from other people at those football games. <laughs> I suggest you modify your attitude because you are floating and I'm about to flush your ass. <laughs> <laughs>